Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. We are here at GDC 2017, getting a bunch of game demos, meeting some developers, learning a lot about what they've been learning about virtual reality. Uh, but something new hardware-wise that was announced this week is this guy. This is LG's VR HMD prototype using Steam VR technology. And while it may be behind the glass here, we actually got to meet with LG, try the headset on, and chat with them about what they've learned about making this headset and how it differs from the HTC Vive. Let's go check it out. Okay, so this is LG's development kit that we're showing at GDC today. Um, it's a collaboration with Valve, and it uses the room scale uh, tracking technology provided by Valve. One of the cool features about the device is the ability to slide the front display forward and flip it 90 degrees. We think this is kind of a cool idea, especially for developers, because they don't have to take it on, put it back off when they're doing testing and debugging. The panel is two OLED panels provided by LG Display, with each resolution for each eye is 1440 by 1280. The refresh rate is 90 hertz, um, and the PPI is 540. At 12 millimeter eye relief, you'll get a 110 degree field of view. And you specify 12 meter eye relief because you can move yeah. the Close. display and lenses away and closer to you. So one of the, that's another cool feature. The ability to shift the front of the display horizontally also means that glasses wearers can easily put the device on without having to sh shift it over their glasses. So yeah, we're here at GDC to get as much feedback as we can from developers and from press to see what are the good points of the device, what are the pain points. Um, then we can go away, um, obviously fix this, these problems, um, and then hopefully add more innovation to it. We can't really say much like what we intend to do. Um, but I guess we obviously try to increase the resolution of the panel, maybe reduce the weight, yeah. And even right now, you're using essentially uh, 2080 by 1280, pretty high resolution. OLED panel is interesting. You said it's 90 hertz. Uh, are you guys making custom optics, or how are you doing the lenses? Are they Fresnel lenses? So the lenses are refractive at the moment. We have both types of lenses made, but um, we've made a conscious decision on this development kit to use the refractive because we thought it gave a better contrast and a clearer image. Is that something potentially that may change in the future, or is that what you're going to stick yeah, with with the could, consumer? We could, we could look at it but I'm not sure how we're gonna go moving forward, yeah. Um, so how much does the whole unit weigh, or what's the target weight, even though you say it might change later? Um, I can't give you those values at the moment, but um, yeah, you can feel it for yourself. Um, but yeah, the target weight is a little bit lower yeah, than the current weight, yeah. I noticed there's also uh, no earphones on here, but there is a headphone jack. Is that something you're also considering? We have a headphone jack on this development kit, but going forward, we need to make a decision whether we want to do integrated audio or a headphone jack. Mm. Well, in terms of connectivity, it looks like it's just one cable coming mm -hmm. out of here. Yeah. Uh, is that going to be the case for the final version? <laughs> and, um, I'm not sure, yeah? We have to, all these decisions have to be made, but in the development kit, we, we use one cable, which is USB Type-C, which goes into a box and splits out, yeah. And that would provide power, video, and the data for the tracking yeah. from the headset. Yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. Um, can you talk about the development of the controllers as well and, and how that design works and what features you might be adding? Yep. Okay, so the controllers we're using at the moment follow Valve's Viper concept. So it's kind of very similar to what you can see currently on the market. Um, we've shifted the buttons around a little bit. The system button has moved above the trackpad because we found that a lot of people were accidentally pressing the button. Um, also, we provided an extra application button on the controller. Um, we found that uh, application developers like to pair their buttons when they assign their buttons in pairs, so they like to use up, down, back, forward, and so that's why we applied, provided an extra button on the controller, yeah. Um, and it looks like you guys are showing some demos here, some games, yeah. so you guys also um, working on software to, um, to, to showcase this hardware? So at the moment, right, LG is predominantly a hardware company. We have the display technologies, we have the optics technologies, we're not a content, content providing company. Um, one of the reasons to be here today is to speak to developers and get them interested in developing for the device. And obviously, hopefully getting some development kits out to selected partners. Um, one of the 
another core reason of being collabing with Valve is um, that we now, as because we're Steam VR compatible, we can access all the current VR content that's available on Steam. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, how this thing will be packaged, I assume the controllers connect and pair to the the headset directly. There's no extra dongles needed. No, no extra dongles. No, it, it should all be fine. Yeah. Um, but the t fundamental technology is the same. So the, the base station, the it's technology is the same. But so with the base stations, the technology is the same. But we manufacture them ourselves. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, Jeremy. What did you think? Well, the ergonomics are pretty good. Uh, yeah. It's it's way different than the Vive, right? It, it's, first of all, the entire front of it can come out like the PSVR, but then it can also swivel up. That's the big thing. I mean, I think that they're thinking a lot about developers in this case, but I think anybody would welcome this, especially people who are sitting at a computer playing VR games. I'm constantly taking my headset and putting it up here, and the lenses get all you know foggy from my, the sweat on my forehead or the, my hair. This, it doesn't touch anything the whole time. They didn't want to tell us about the weight at all because I think their focus is on how it feels when you wear it, yeah. irregardless of weight, because they can still lower that. Um, how it fit on my head felt very much like the PSVR, where the padding is the top of my forehead mm -hmm. and also in the back, down to even the dial that you turn and the button you press to loosen it up. That felt very, very much like just a black PSVR. But the innovation here is that it flips up and goes closer and further away. Yeah, it's, it's also a pressure fit. At least this is the prototype. Yeah. Who knows what might change for the final, but right now, this whole movement right here is all done with friction. So there's nothing that locks into place. You're not dialing anything. Nothing clicks. Mm -hmm. uh, this does a little the bit. Back. Yeah, the, the to, ratcheting to get for it the... to strap on. But the movement out and up, it's all just held into place with friction. And it's it works so far so good. Yeah, and you wore it without glasses. I wore mm -hmm. it with glasses, even with my big, thick rim glasses comfortable and I was able to use it. I was able to press it right against my glasses. They're saying about a 110 degree field of view mm -hmm. when it's pressed up 12 meter, millimeters from your eyes. Uh, and also they have high resolution panels, OLED panels that LG makes. That's mm -hmm. their expertise. They make smartphones uh, in here. So already a little higher resolution than what's in the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift. Here it's two horizontal panels, mm -hmm. um, 2880 by 1280 total. Mm -hmm. And unlike on the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, which are two vertical panels next to each other. These um, are horizontal. These are horizontal. But they did indicate that that might even change. Right. Like it, anything could change with this headset. Yeah, it could even be higher. I mean, by the time this comes out, and maybe let's say later this year, maybe it's gonna be, we're gonna want a, a 4K panel or something here. Right. The lenses are something they wouldn't let us catch a glimpse inside or take a video of, but just putting lenses on, they were not Fresnel lenses, in my opinion. Mm. It reminded me of wearing like the Gear VR, where I could see the OLED sub-pixel arrangement inside the screen. Mm. My experience was, it wasn't quite that different than the existing Vive or, or, um, or Rift. And I couldn't tell if they were Fresnel or not, but that area of, of focus was still pretty small for me, and there mm. I was getting a God Rays effect. Um, it's interesting, I wasn't wearing glasses as you were, maybe yeah. it has something to do with it. Um, in any case, they said that they had experienced that they had experimented with both types of lenses. They had both in you know in hand, and they're still playing with that. So, mm -hmm. um, but they were pretty protective of us shooting pictures of it. So, there's yeah. something proprietary about it. Something just looking at the lenses, we couldn't see the ridges that you would right. see, the concentric circles that yeah. you would see on the HTC Vive. So, ergonomically, I also like that it's only one cable, <coughs> one USB Type C cable that comes out. It's not thick, so if you get that relatively long, and the one they have here isn't very long. Yeah. Um, then it'll feel more like, at least on the Oculus Rift, just one cable coming on the headset right. for power a, for video. About one meter of cable that comes off the headset, it plugs into a, another cable, that, um, which is actually pretty smart, like a breakaway cable, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There's no integrated sound in this one, but like everything else, they're saying that could change. Uh, there's a headphone port on there, and they are getting feedback at this show that people do like integrated sound, yes. so that's a good thing. Please put integrated sound in your headset LG when this comes out. Now, the controllers themselves, yeah. you know, it looks Looks like they took the HTC Vive controller and made it say hard angles instead of circles. Yeah, um, they had a, a word for that, like the Python design or something like that. But, yeah. Um, the, the most interesting thing about this is it's practically the same thing as a Vive controller, but they have added another button. Mm. So rather than having just one programmable button, there's now two up at the top, uh, which are, and they've moved the system button from the bottom of the touchpad up to the top. Of so the you screen. don't accidentally hit it. All three buttons are now up there, and the, one is wider. The system button is now wider than the other one, rather than just being, you know, indented. So um, that's interesting. That there's that, this actually does not have 
perfect 100% parity with the Vive controllers. There is another button on this one. And also the ergonomics are slightly different. Even though you have that tracking here, it's not a donut. It's kind of a tracking like a hexagon on the top of the, the controller. And then I felt a little more of a curve on the bottom side of the controller and a little bit more weight on the bottom as opposed to the HTC Vive controller. Mm -hmm. um, and they, said, that, they said that, that Valve has been very helpful with the controller design too. Mm -hmm. That they would send them prototypes and then Valve would do tests in their own testing environments and get feedback on better sensor placement or, or design changes. Now, LG is making an end-to-end -end system. They're making the base stations. They're making the headset. They're making the controller. The controllers pair the headsets, of course. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see in the future a kind of a la carte model where you get the headset where that it's going to be perfect fit for your graphics card, mm -hmm. what resolution that you can render at, and then maybe use a controller, whether it's the HTC Vive controller or the tracking pucks or Valve's experimental prototype controller that you don't hold and match it with the headset you want, yeah. and then get the base stations that are the latest and greatest design. You want choice. I want choice. Well, they did say that the headset should be compatible with the existing Valve base or Vive base stations. Certainly, it's not going to support the wireless adapter that it was going to, going to be available for the Vive That's true. this spring because of the USB-C adapter. That's right, yeah. TPCast would, wouldn't work for this. And also for USB-C, that breakout box plugs into DisplayPort, not HDMI. Mm. So that's also a slight difference. But mm. like Jeremy said, LG heavily iterated to us that it was up in the air. Everything yeah. about this is a prototype. They're experimenting with making HMD. I'm glad we're going to see some competition even in the Steam VR space. Um, and we'd be excited to see more of this as it comes out later this year. Yeah, very comfortable headset. Very, very comfortable. That's a big takeaway. We want headsets that we can remove without taking the entire headset off. And not only that, but place the weight where I can hold it for long periods of time. Yeah, they made some good decisions. Awesome. So that's the LG HMD prototype here at GDC. Uh, we're covering more impressions of this and the games we've been seeing on our VR show, AR show projection. So please check that out on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe below. But until then, Jeremy and I, we'll see you next time.